India does not have any railways that can be classified as high speed rail HSR by international standards i.e. railways with operational speeds exceeding 200 kilometers per hour 120 miles per hour the current fastest train in India is the Gadaman Express with a top speed of 160 km per hour, 99 miles per hour which only runs between Delhi and Jhansi. Prior to the 2014 general election, the two major national parties Bharatiya Janata Party and Indian National Congress Inc. pledged to introduce high-speed rail. The INC pledged to connect all of India's million plus cities by high speed rail, whereas BJP, which won the election, promised to build the Diamond Quadrilateral project, which would connect the cities of Chennai, Delhi, Kolkata, and Mumbai via high speed rail. This project was approved as a priority for the new government in the incoming President's speech. Construction of 1 km of high-speed railway track will cost 100 crore rupees 14 million dollars 140 crore rupees 19 million dollars which is 10 to 14 times higher than the cost of construction of standard railway India's Union Council of Ministers approved the proposal of Japan to build India's first high-speed railway on the 10th of December 2015 the planned rail will run approximately 500 kilometers, 310 miles between Mumbai and the western city of Ahmedabad at a top speed of 320 kilometers per hour, 200 miles per hour. Under this proposal, the construction began in 2017 and is expected to be completed in the year 2022. The estimated cost of this project is 980 billion rupees, 14 billion dollars, and is financed by a low interest loan from Japan. Operation is officially targeted to begin in 2023, but India has announced intentions to attempt to bring the line into operation one year earlier. It will transport the passengers from Ahmedabad to Mumbai in just three hours and its ticket fare will be cheaper than airplanes i.e. rupees to rupees. India will have two types of gauges for high-speed rail. The new HSR tracks with Japanese technology will be in standard gauge, whereas older tracks upgraded to the HSR standard will be in broad gauge. Therefore there will be no interchangeability between newly laid tracks and the older upgraded tracks for passenger and cargo traffic. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Current effort to increase speed to 160 to 200 kilometers per hour. Topic: <laughs> Background Indian Railways aims to increase the speed of passenger trains to 160 to 200 km per hour 99 to 124 miles per hour on dedicated conventional tracks. They intend to improve their existing conventional lines to handle speeds of up to 160 km per hour, 99 miles per hour with a goal of speed more than 200 km per hour, 120 miles per hour on new tracks with improved technology. Initially the trains will have the maximum speed of 160 km per hour, 99 miles per hour with railway coaches which can run at the speed of 200 km per hour 120 miles per hour will be rolled out from railway coach factory of indian railway from june 2015 indian railway coach factories are manufacturing semi high speed coaches but tracks are not capable of supporting the same dedicated freight corridors coming up across india will move cargo traffic from most of the current passenger railway tracks and will support indian railways effort to increase the speed of the passenger trains to 200 kilometers per hour the chinese ministry of railways ran a speed up campaign from 1997 to 2007 to increase the speed of train travel 
The campaign was implemented in six rounds and increased average speed of passenger trains in China from 43 km per hour to 70 km per hour. Several existing railway tracks were upgraded to run the trains at 250 km per hour. In February 2014, Henri Popart Lafarge of Alstom, manufacturer of trains used on TGV in France, stated that India is at least 5 to 10 years away from high-speed trains. He suggested the country should first upgrade the infrastructure to handle trains traveling 100 to 120 kilometers per hour, 62 to 75 miles per hour. In July 2014, a trial run of a semi-high speed train with 10 coaches and 2 generators reached a speed of 160 km per hour 99 miles per hour between New Delhi and Agra the train named Gataman Express had its first commercial run at the 5th of April 2016 it is expected to reach the maximum speed of 160 km per hour and an average speed of 113 km per hour, 70 miles per hour. Topic import of global expertise China built its high-speed expertise with the help of license building of the high-speed railway coaches by local manufacturing units. Later those units used those hands-on expertise to build their own high-speed railway locomotives. India has taken a different path where the foreign railways will import or build their own factories in India. French National Railways or SNCF proposed to upgrade the Shatabdi train track between Delhi and Chandigarh to run the trains at a maximum speed of 220 km per hour. This is expected to provide hands-on expertise for Indian railways to implement semi-high speed trains across India, specifically running Rajdhani and Shatabdi trains at maximum speed 220 plus km per hour with average speed of 150 km per hour. Feasibility study of running semi-high speed trains on the 500 km chennai Bengaluru and Mysore section has been submitted by the China Railway or UN Engineering Group Co Ltd to Railway Board. It envisions reducing travel time from existing 7 hours to 4 hours and 45 minutes. The German Finance Ministry has agreed to finance a government feasibility study into a high-speed rail link between Chennai and Mysore, and had discussed a project to modernize the Chennai-Hyderabad route. Germany is conducting a feasibility study for running trains at a speed of about 300 km per hour on the 450 km long chennai bengaluru mysuru route. It has already completed pre-feasibility study in 2016. A consortium of consultants comprising DBE and C, Intraplan Consult and Ingenieburo Vossing are conducting the study. During the trial run in Delhi Mumbai route, Spain's Talgo trains reached a peak speed of 150 km per hour, 93 miles per hour, observing laid down speed cautions and halting at the usual stoppages as the Mumbai Rajdhani. Talgo clocked an average speed of 117.5 km kilometers per hour 73.0 miles per hour the mumbai rajdhani took 15 hours and 50 minutes at an average speed of 87.7 kilometers per hour 54.5 miles per hour topic semi high speed systems progress The inauguration of the Gataman Express by Railway Minister Mr. Suresh Prabhu on 5 April 2016 ushered the beginning of semi-high speed trains in India. The Gataman Express runs at the top speed of 160 km per hour from Delhi to Agra. With the great success of Gataman Express, the Indian Railways plans to start additional semi-high speed services along the Delhi, Bhopal, Chandigarh, Kanpur, Lucknow routes shortly. 
Railway Minister Mr. Sadananda Gowda mentioned in his Rail Budget 2014 speech that the railways will start high-speed trains at 160 to 200 km per hour on nine routes. Indian Railways is also testing to increase the speed of the Delhi-Mumbai Rajdhani Express train. Dual locomotives are used for this purpose, one at each end thus accelerating and decelerating from both ends. Proposed increased speed will be 160 kmph between Delhi Mathura stretch and 130 kmph for the remaining stretch. While Indian Railways is bringing bullet train from Japan, it is doing all possible things to cut down the cost for high-speed rail operation by indigenously developing technologies. Green background for the systems that are under construction. Blue background for the systems that are currently being planned. Use of train sets Indian Railways has proposed EMU train sets to operate at semi-high speed 180 km per hour. These are of two types. Train 18, which will be a day train replacing Shatabdi Express and Train 20, which will be an overnight train replacing Rajdhani Express. Train 18 will roll out on 29 December 2018 while Train 20 will roll out in 2020. These trains will be manufactured by ICF Integral Coach Factory. Description These trains will have loco pilot cabins on both ends. This will prevent the need to reverse the locomotive which will save time. As these are EMU train sets, the time and distance taken to accelerate and decelerate will reduce, enabling the train to travel at top speed for more distance. Each coach will be fitted with traction motor so the train will be self-propelled. The train coaches will have automatic sliding doors, onboard Wi-Fi connection, GPS-based information system, wide windows and will be fully air-conditioned. Bio-toilets will be installed in coaches. The rake of train 18 will have 16 coaches consisting of two executive chair cars and 14 AC chair cars. It will operate at 160 km per hour, while train 20 will have 20 coaches consisting of AC first class sleeper, AC two tier sleeper, AC three tier sleeper classes and an AC chair car. It will operate at 160 km per hour. Train 20's proposed top speed to be 176 km per hour. Criticism Critics point out that Delhi Agra time savings are not based on the speed of train but based on other factors. According to critics, the reduction in travel time due to speed is a mere three minutes, and that other maneuverings are largely responsible for the drastic drop. The reduction of time is largely due to shifting the train's departure point from New Delhi railway station to Hazrat Nizamuddin and doing away with the scheduled stop at Mathura reportedly saving 14 minutes. Limiting the locomotive to 10 coaches, Bhopal Shatabdi has 14 leads to a decrease of another 2 minutes. Thus track improvements and superior infrastructure lead to a decrease of only 5 minutes, 3 minutes owing to route relay and interlocking at Agra, and 1 minute each due to the approval to run a passenger train on the third line at Palwal and Bhuteshwar, installation of thick web switches at four points and putting up a track station at Chada. There were also serious questions raised about the safety of the passengers as the infrastructure on which semi-high-speed trains are running may not be able to run at such high speeds. For example, it is preferred to run these higher speed trains on 60 kg tracks, but as of now they are running on 52 kg tracks. <laughs> Progress in introduction of 250–350 km per hour trains Topic. 
Topic: <laughs> Current status. India's first high-speed corridor between Mumbai and Ahmedabad started construction in 2017 and is expected to be completed by 2022. The foundation stone ceremony was held on 14 September 2017 when Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe and Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi flagged off the construction work in Ahmedabad. The Junior East, Hitachi E5 series Shinkansen trains will be used in this corridor. It has a maximum speed of 350 km per hour, and a maximum operational speed of 320 km per hour and an average speed of 260 km per hour. History One of the first proposals to introduce high-speed trains in India was mooted in the mid-1980s by then Railway Minister Madhavrao Sindhya. A high-speed rail line between Delhi and Kanpur via Agra was proposed. An internal study found the proposal to not be viable at that time due to the high cost of construction and the inability of passengers to bear much higher fares than those for normal trains. The railways instead introduced Shatabdi trains which ran at 130 km per hour. The Indian Ministry of Railways White Paper, Vision 2020, submitted to Indian Parliament on 18 December 2009, envisages the implementation of regional high speed rail projects to provide services at 250 to 350 km per hour, and planning for corridors connecting commercial, tourist, and pilgrimage hubs. Six corridors have been identified for technical studies on setting up of high speed rail corridors Delhi Chandigarh Amritsar, Pune Mumbai Ahmedabad, Chennai Vijayawada Dornakal Kazipet Hyderabad, Howrah Haldia, Chennai Bangalore Coimbatore Kochi Tiruvananthapuram, Delhi Agra Kanpur Lucknow Varanasi Patna. These high speed rail corridors will be built as elevated corridors. The Ministry of Railways set up the National High Speed Rail Corporation Limited as a government company on the 12th of February 2016 to promote high speed rail corridors. RVNL set up a corporation called High Speed Rail Corporation of India Limited (HSRC) on the 25th of July 2013 that will deal with the proposed high speed rail corridor projects. The corporation is a wholly owned subsidiary of Rail Vikas Nigam Limited (RVNL). It will handle tendering, pre-feasibility studies, awarding of contracts, and execution of the projects. The corporation will comprise four members, all of whom will be railway officials. All high-speed rail lines will be implemented as public-private partnerships on a design, build, finance, operate, and transfer DBFOT basis. The corporation was officially formed on 29 October 2013. Cost In a feasibility study published in 1987, RDSO and JICA estimated the construction costs to be Rs 49 million rupees per kilometer for a line dedicated to 250 to 300 kilometers per hour trains. In 2010, the 1987 estimated cost, inflated at 10% a year, would be 439 million rupees per kilometer, 9.5 million dollars per kilometer. Wrights is currently performing a feasibility study. According to the media, the costs for constructing such rail lines in India are estimated to be 700 rupees minus 1,000 million per kilometers, 15 dollars minus 22 million per kilometers. Therefore, the Mumbai Ahmedabad route of 500 kilometers will cost up to 500 billion rupees, 8.04 billion dollars to build and to make a profit. Passengers will have to be charged 5 rupees per kilometer, 11 cents per kilometer. 
Delhi to Amritsar one way, a distance of 450 km, will cost about Rs. $2,000. At $15 minus 22 million per km, cost estimates are in line with $18 million per km of the recently completed Wuhan Guangzhou HSR line in China. The Mumbai Ahmedabad line is expected to cost 650 billion rupees. Topic: <laughs> Proposed routes. In India, trains in the future with top speeds of 250 to 300 km per hour, are envisaged to run on elevated corridors to isolate high-speed train tracks and thereby prevent trespassing by animals or people. The current conventional lines between Amritsar New Delhi, and Ahmedabad Mumbai runs through suburban and rural areas, which are flat and have no tunnels. The Ahmedabad–Mumbai line runs near the coast and therefore, has more bridges, and parts of it are in backwaters or forests. The 1987 RDSO – JICA feasibility study found the Mumbai–Ahmedabad line to be the most promising. <laughs> Project execution To put the construction in perspective, in the period 2005–09 Indian Railways took on construction of 42 completely new conventional lines, a total of 4,060 km at a cost of Rs 167 billion dollars, or Rs 41 million rupees per km, .89 million dollars per km. A public-private partnership mode of investment and execution is envisaged for the 250 to 350 km per hour high-speed rail project. <laughs> Feasibility studies Multiple pre-feasibility and feasibility studies have been done or are in progress. The consultants for pre-feasibility study for four corridors are Sistra France's company for Delhi Panipat Mbala Chandigarh Ludhiana Jalandhar Amritsar Sistra, Atalfair and Rights Limited for Pune, Mumbai, Ahmedabad British firm Mott MacDonald for Delhi Agra Lucknow Varanasi Patna INECO, PROINTEC, Aisha for Haura Haldia, Japan External Trade Organization, JETRO, and Oriental Consultancy, along with Parsons Brinkerhoff India for Chennai Vijayawada Dornakal Kazipet Hyderabad. In September 2013, an agreement was signed in New Delhi to complete a feasibility study of high speed rail between Ahmedabad and Mumbai within 18 months. The study will cost 500 million yen and the cost will be shared 50 to 50 by Japan and India. Location of the stations, its accessibility, integration with public transport, parking and railway stations design will play an important role in the success of the high speed railway system. Mumbai may have an underground corridor to have high speed rail start from the CST terminal. European experiences have shown that railway stations outside the city receive less patronage and ultimately make the high speed railway line unfeasible. High Speed Rail Corporation has called for international bidders for carrying out a pre feasibility study of the 458 km Delhi Chandigarh Amritsar High Speed Corridor. The feasibility study for the Chennai Bengaluru High Speed Rail Corridor was completed by Germany in November 20. 2018. The study found that the route was feasible. The proposed corridor would be 435 km long and would have an end-to-end -end travel time of 2 hours and 25 minutes with trains operating at a speed of 320 km per hour. The study proposed constructing 84% of the track on viaducts, 11% underground and the remaining 4% at grade. 
The current fastest train on the Chennai Bengaluru route, the Shatabdi Express, completes the journey in seven hours. Diamond Quadrilateral Project The Diamond Quadrilateral High Speed Network connecting the four major cities of Chennai, Delhi, Kolkata, and Mumbai was a key plank in the BJP's election manifesto. PM Modi mentioned in his address to the Joint Session of Parliament on 9 June 2014 that the new government was committing to launch the project. Topic. Proposal to introduce 500 to 550 km per hour trains Topic. Current status As of November 2016, the Indian Railways has asked Rail India Technical and Economic Service rights to prepare a detailed project report within the next six months. The Railways aims to implement the first stretch of the project in less than three years' time. The Andhra Pradesh state government has decided to build its metro train system in major cities using the maglev technology. The Changsha Metro system was studied by a team to gain better understanding of running the metro using maglev. Vijayawada, Visakhapatnam and Amaravati Metro railway systems will be built using low-speed maglev train systems. It is expected make the industrial sector in the Andhra Pradesh the most cost-efficient and exports competitive in world market by reducing the logistics cost for the transport of people and freight. Maglev-based metro systems improve the quality of life in cities and provide efficient, high-speed rail systems to generate far higher levels of economic output. This is expected to create an industrial base, hands-on expertise and lower costs for maglev in India. Kochi Metro explored using the South Korean maglev technology, but it was not fully operational in 2011. So, Kochi Metro opted for wheeled train set technology for initial routes. But, future routes may use maglev technology. India may build its future metro train systems using maglev as it has faster acceleration and deceleration than traditional metro systems. China is building new lines for Beijing Metro and Changsha Metro using maglev technology to retain Chinese cost competitiveness in the world market by reducing the transportation time and cost. Earlier in 2016, Indian Railways announced a seminar with ultra-high-speed train manufacturers to explore the possibility of introducing an ultra-high-speed train system on a public-private partnership basis. The corporation has issued an expression of interest to global investors to implement an over 500 km per hour rail system. Transport infrastructure including stations, platforms, tracks, signal systems, fare structures and timetables would be developed by private firms, Indian railways would handle land-related issues, and the revenue would be shared. The new railway system, parallel to the current one, should support passenger and freight traffic. Purpose. Indian Railways is exploring the possibility of a super speed also called ultra high speed rail network in India. The railway minister's vision is to make rolling stock the driver for India's shift from being a technology importer and manufacturer to becoming a developer and designer for future rolling stock technology. Ultra high speed trains running on maglev will bring in efficiency, time reduction, and cost reduction for the Indian industry, general public, and overall economy of the country with almost the same cost as the wheeled high speed trains. Such trains could make the Indian industry and economy the most efficient in the world. 
However the major blocking financial hindrance is that maglev technology has consistently shown to be more than double the cost of standard steel to steel bullet train and thus has been a major economic hindrance to the beginning of any construction of the Chuo Shinkansen. China wanted to build its high-speed network using maglev technology. But, in 1998 there was no commercial train service running on maglev anywhere in the world. Then, China took a decision to go with the older wheel-based technology for its HSR network. Now, after around 20 years, India has the opportunity to take a decision to build its HSR network using maglev as presently there are multiple maglev railway lines in operation and construction stages in multiple countries. India is focusing on bringing 500 to 550 km per hour trains within next five years through a public-private partnership model, where Indian Railway will be a partner by providing land for the railway lines and infrastructure. Every other aspect of the system will be decided and operated by the private partner. It is expected to provide the following benefits to the Indian economy. It will bring down the transportation time and cost to lowest in the world. It will bring in massive efficiency in the Indian economy. Goods and people which used to take more than three days for transport, will be transported within three hours. It will build a local base for the next generation of the railway locomotives for export. India will be a leader in 21st century railway technology by building a railway manufacturing ecosystem with the help of the private industry. Indian logistics cost will come down drastically, as of now it is thrice that of China. It will make Indian exports and manufacturing cost competitive, in the price-sensitive world export market. It will create jobs in the economy, by bringing in more businesses to small and medium scale industries which will act as a component and parts supplier for bigger manufacturing firms. It will accelerate scientific research within the country in high-end material science and magnetic science. India will acquire knowledge and expertise in the field, which as of now is possessed by only a handful of countries in the world. High-end technology knowledge can be used for achieving geopolitical purposes and means as demonstrated by world powers. For example, sale of nuclear power reactors, jet engines, high-speed trains, infrastructure building in other countries, military technologies, economic corridors are used in extending the influence of one country over other. India will have strong integration across regions, bringing down the regional differences and increasing people-to-people -people contact. As of now, a northeast person has to spend three days in a train to travel to South India. Super speed trains will make it possible within hours at affordable prices. Air travel versus high-speed trains High-speed trains provide almost the same speed as air travel, while providing multiple additional benefits. Air travel is point-to-point, -point, whereas high-speed trains provide connectivity to en-route locations with railway stations almost every 50 km or so on a railway line. Air travel time savings are nullified by the inefficiency in pre- and post-travel procedures. A traveler may spend an extra six hours for air travel. Four hours to check in two hours in each direction of travel. Two hours to travel to the airport one hour in each direction of travel, whereas railway stations are located nearer to more travelers' points of origin. The cost of traveling to the airport is also saved, as high-speed rail stations can be easily reached through public transport. India will save a massive amount of foreign exchange as cabs and taxis which consume fossil fuel to transport passengers to the airport will not be needed in a HSR era. 
massive saving of foreign exchange for the country as trains will use electricity rather than costly air-grade fossil fuel used in aircraft which has to be imported. Environment-friendly transport as there are no emissions from the trains since they run on electricity. Super speed trains create massive job opportunities in MSME sector within the country, as trains, stations, tracks, guidance and related equipment have to be manufactured and train infrastructure requires regular maintenance, whereas aircraft are imported or leased. Democratization of high-speed travel as more people will be able to access cost-effective high-speed travel, which is as of now available to only a few in the country. Railways have to come up with an answer to the access-controlled expressways which are expected to take away most of the railway passengers in the coming years, which will also cut the travel time by half and with your own vehicle. Super speed trains have major benefits over using your own vehicle on expressways. As of 2017, India has approved construction of 10 expressways. US experience has shown that only a 500 plus kilometer per hour railway can provide benefits over expressways, slower than that will lose out to expressways. Topic Maglev trains in other parts of the world Japan, China, South Korea and Germany have built maglev train systems and few other countries are conducting research projects on implementing futuristic railway systems. China is building new metro trains using maglev systems. It will reduce travel times and improve the efficiency of the economy. Beijing Maglev, Changsha Maglev, Shanghai Maglev, Incheon Airport Maglev and Linimo are examples of Maglev intracity trains. In October 2016, Railway Minister Suresh Prabhu said that six global companies had expressed interest and Indian Railways was building tracks to test trains at speeds of over 400 km per hour 250 miles per hour. Technology choice India is preferring to go with magnetic attraction over magnetic repulsion technology for cost competitiveness purposes. Because of this India may not build world's fastest maglev trains as Japan did. India is expected to standardize the high-speed railway locomotives and systems, as China did for interoperability between multiple private and public players operating the high-speed railway within the country. <laughs> <laughs> Cost reduction and economic viability These are the few proposed solutions to reduce the cost of maglev trains in India Indigenous technology and local manufacturing industrial base Multiple Indian companies with maglev expertise which can compete in the tendering process and provide competitive pricing Manpower development with seminars and projects in higher technological institutes Double-decker trains which can have more passengers and railway cars, rather than single-decker trains Dual usage for both passengers and cargo Underground train stations near the central business districts of the towns and cities, which will increase the number of passengers using the maglev service Large-scale development when Delhi Metro was being constructed it was criticized for being costly, but it later became a template for nationwide metro rollout. <laughs> Hyperloop 900 to 1100 km per hour. Mumbai Pune Hyperloop 
It is a proposed 1,000 km per hour hyperloop system that will take 14 minutes compared to the current three hours to commute between these two cities while carrying 10,000 commuters per hour 5, in each direction. The route was found to be feasible and can be made operational by 2026 as per the detailed project report DPR submitted to Pune Metropolitan Region Development Authority PMRDA by Virgin Hyperloop 1 in January 2018. DPR provided three feasible terminal endpoints options in Mumbai, namely Dadar, Santa Cruz and the Mumbai International Airport. Currently, 300 people commute daily between these two cities daily in one, 10,000 vehicles including 80,000 cars and 6,000 buses. <laughs> Vijayawada Amaravathi Hyperloop The Andhra Pradesh state government is currently studying the feasibility of the project and if introduced, the 40 km distance between the two cities can be covered in just six minutes. AP Economic Development Board APEDB and US-based Hyperloop Transportation Technologies HTT have signed a Memorandum of Understanding for the same. Andhra Pradesh already has decided to build its metro train systems using maglev technology and has sent the study teams to China for practical study of the operational maglev-based metro train systems. <laughs> Bengaluru–Chennai Hyperloop Los Angeles-based Hyperloop One, has signed a MO with Karnataka government to conduct a feasibility study for the route between Bangalore and Chennai. Such a Hyperloop will reduce the travel time to 20 minutes between the two cities. <laughs> Production R&D Institutions Malvia Center for Railway Technology, IIT, BHU, Varanasi Center for Railways Research, IIT Kharagpur Research Design and Standards Organization RDSO, India does not have indigenous high-speed or super-speed railway technology. It is currently dependent on other countries. In a campaign promise made in January 2014, Prime Minister Narendra Modi promised to build four railway universities so that India can be a world leader in high-speed railway technology. Manufacturing <inaudible> <inaudible> base <inaudible> 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 A manufacturing base will be constructed for production of high-speed trains in India. The project will be executed on PPP basis, though no formal announcement has been made yet, as the project is still in planning stages, and is yet to be executed. See also Express trains in India Memu